Welcome back to the channel guys, it is me, AD Summer 44. So today guys, I'm going to give you guys a Bayern Munich versus Manchester United, kind of a more in-depth review of the game. Now I know I discussed about this game a bit in my stream, but in the stream I had to do things in a bit of a rushed manner. I had to go somewhere, so you know, I wanted to do kind of an in-depth review of the game, you know, and give more thoughts on the game. So this will be around like a 10 to 15 minute video, I'm guessing. Maybe 5 to 10 minutes, I'm not sure. Let's see how long this goes. So remember guys, to let me know your thoughts in the comments below guys, and yeah. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started man. So before I even start with this video Let's talk about why we love football football is such a great sport because The beauty of it with football is that upsets can happen almost any day of the week Like every single week. There's gonna probably be an upset Okay, and that's what I love about football is that it's so unpredictable, right? Because coming into this game We all thought that many of us thought that Byron would destroy United because United just got battered against Brighton at home. So the logic was that Manchester United would get battered because Byron have the better players than Brighton and Byron should smash um, United at home. And plus Byron's at home as well, the Allianz Arena. Allianz Arena is like a fortress. Byron haven't lost at the Allianz Arena and 34 matches of the Champions League, I believe. So everything was set up for Byron to win by a big score. And Eric Tenag will be under significant pressure. That was the narrative ahead of the game. Did it turn out like that way? Not quite. And that's why I love about football is that it didn't happen. And that's the beauty of football is that matchups are key. Okay. And you saw in this game how Manchester United put out a good performance. There are some clubs that are just not good against certain teams. I think Brighton might be Manchester United's new bogey team. You know. And that's the thing, is that every club has these kind of teams that are bogey teams. For Bayern, it's Gladbach, you know? It's a team they should be beating, but they just don't beat them because Gladbach just always turn up against them, you know? And maybe the same could be said with Brighton. Anyways, getting back to the match here, let's discuss this match. I want to start off first saying with Manchester United and saying that they should feel proud of themselves for this kind of performance. The fact that they went to Allianz Arena, one of the most formidable stadiums in the world, and managed to almost pull out a result is very commendable. You have to give them a ton of props for that because many of us did not see this coming. Many of us thought that they wouldn't come close. They would just come, Byron would just destroy them, you know? And the fact that they nearly did is quite impressive and an achievement in itself. Yes, you could say the goals were very scrappy. Yes, you could say they were a bit lucky with some of the deflections and goals, but it doesn't matter. It still counts, you know? And it's so sad that they almost did it but individuals on the day let them down. And we'll get to those players in a bit. If you're a Bayern Munich fan, you should feel very much concerned with the win. Okay? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't feel happy. Obviously, you should. But you shouldn't. You should, you should feel a bit relieved and feel a bit concerned. Because you could have very well not won this game. You could have very well tied this game or even worse, lost this game. Which would have been catastrophic for Thomas Tuchel. And remember, guys, he wasn't present at the game. Okay, and the thing with Bayern Munich is that why I'm saying this is because Bayern Munich have standards. They're one of the biggest clubs in the world. Bayern Munich have this insane standard where they don't want to just win. They want to win at any cost. They want to win by big score lines. They're not just satisfied just scoring one goal and winning the game. They want to score as many goals as they possibly can. This club has an insane ruthless mentality. And many clubs in the world would just be satisfied just beating United 4-3. But for Bayern, it's not like that. Bayern Munich have insane standards, and you have to respect that. This is a club that has won Champions League six times, guys. This is a six-time Champions League winning team. Their standards, their mentality is one of the best in the world, you know. And I think we have to give credit to what Bayern Munich is as a club, as a football club. Anyways, now that we kind of discussed about how each team should feel, let's discuss the game in itself. The first goal, let's talk about it, man. Actually, before we get to the first goal, let's talk about that start from United. United started brilliantly. They started the game brilliantly. Pellistry almost scored there. Alfonso Davis made an excellent challenge there. And Ulrich made a very good save. And for that moment, up until the first goal, United were in control. United were in control in the game. And then the first goal happened, and it kind of, it pretty much destroyed United mentality-wise. You know? And... For me, that first goal, you you got to say, man, Onana, man. That's terrible goalkeeping. And I'm sorry. It's inexcusable. Okay? It's inexcusable. Because that kind of shot you should be saving from that range. Sané literally hit it to you. 
and it was just a simple catch and you couldn't hold on to it it, it it's not good man it's not a good look and the second goal what was united's midfield doing united's midfield was so bad like they were allowing musiel to have that space and freedom to make that pass for Gnabry. of course he finished it brilliantly but you have to give credit to musiel musiel is fantastic in my opinion honestly i thought he was a man of the match i thought he was a man of the match um, for me, he was amazing on the day with his dribbling, with his playmaking ability. The guy is fantastic. I really like Musial, one of my favorite Bayern players. And um, for Bayern Munich, man, 2-0 just before halftime, you know. And for United in particular, they just look good. But once the first goal came in, you just knew that their heads were going to drop. And that's the problem I have with United is that it feels like once there's a bit of adversity, the, once, once the things aren't going their way, they let themselves down. And that is my issue with United is that they have to improve upon this mentality. Tana has to do something about this um, after the game, you know. And I gotta say, man, they, they played they played decent. You know, Regulon was decent on the day. I thought he was good on the day actually. And I, surprisingly, I think he's actually been a good loan player. I didn't think he would be this good. Um, and I just think for United, man, it's been good. You know. And then the third goal, and the third goal, man, what a goal from Rasmus Hoyland. Hoyland there and that kind of space. You know, it took a little deflection there off of Kim, I believe, and it's a goal nonetheless. And Bayern, I mean, sorry, not Bayern, United have themselves back in the game. Then it comes to a penalty decision, which I'm not a huge fan of. I think the handball was extremely harsh. Um, for me, it's a very harsh penalty. And, you know, it's a handball at the end of the day. Up steps Kane, and Kane slots it brilliantly. Kane is a very good penalty taker. And at that point, it was 3-1. You're thinking of yourself, okay, it's surely game over, right? Byron had numerous opportunities to make the lead, um, to make a fourth. I think Sonny almost scored. Kane almost scored. And I believe, um, you know, they missed some chances. And then finally, the second goal came in from United. Once again, man, Casemiro, man, got very, very lucky there with the amount of bounces and deflections that happened with the passing. And he got it to make a 3-2. And United have themselves, could they actually do the unthinkable? And then, of course, Matthias Tell came off the bench and scored right there. He also missed... A chance i believe as well and then um and then the other end casemiro scores right from the corner to make it four three so for united man i just think for united they put out a great display they were competitive um they put they kept fighting throughout the game and they almost did the unthinkable as i said but i will say this though i do think for Bayern munich they should have scored more goals you know and for united they, they did get a bit lucky with those goals Let, let's face it but at the end of the day, United put out a good performance. And as I said before, guys, so the United just have to improve upon their defensive shape. That's kind of like my issue because three of those goals were pretty much pretty much defensive mistakes. Like the only goal I would say Byron actually worked for and legitimately earned is the fourth goal. The, th the other three goals, really bad defending. Really bad. The first one, error from goalkeeper. Second one, error from the midfield and the defense. And the third one, a very unnecessary uh, third one a penalty that's a very uh, kind of like a 50 50 you know uh, the fourth goal was well crafted though the fourth goal was well crafted so you have to give credit to that you know and i just think that for um Bayern munich man um my issues with Bayern is that their midfield is still not stable enough i think they need someone else in the midfield than kimmich i think they need another dm which is why paulinho was so important to this Bayern team imagine Bayern got paulinho guys that would have been an excellent signing he would have been able to con be able to control the game and ensure that Bayern be in it. Because for me, Goretzka is not great. I feel like the Goretzka's guy is finished. I don't think the guy has really been that great. And I feel like the guy is still living off that 2020 Champions League. And same for Gnabry. Gnabry is also living off that 2020. The guy has not really been that great. Um, and, you know, I just think for Bayern Munich, man, they got to work on that. I also think they need a new goalkeeper. Because I'm sorry, you cannot win the Champions League with Ulrich as your goalkeeper. You just simply can't. The guy is not that great as a goalkeeper. Um, you know. And, um... And once again, also another thing that's really weird with Tuchel is that why is Conrad Limer a right back? Like, that's such an odd decision. You know, you got to play Masroy. Masroy is a really good player. It's just that Masroy is injury prone. So I, I guess I kind of understand why, you know, to, you know, ensure that he doesn't get, in, you know, injuries. But still, like, I just don't think Limer is suitable at the right back. And I think he's going to get exposed those huge games against, like, the against like best teams in the world, like Manchester City, possibly Real Madrid. He might get exposed against with the, play, the wingers that Man City, Real Madrid have. So for Manchester United, man, I just think that for me, they have to address the midfield. I think the midfield is kind of the biggest concern I have with them today. You know, Erickson, I thought, didn't really have a good game. You know, gave away a penalty. Wasn't really that great. And I think defensively, he isn't that great, you know. 
And so, yeah, man, I think that's pretty much my takes from this game. You know, like I said, guys, I think I did a good job recapping the game for you guys. I'm sure there are probably some things I missed and which I did. If I did, please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there probably is. And this was a great game, man. This was a great, enjoyable game of football to watch. And like I said, guys, oh, I forgot to mention this, guys. This game in some ways actually reminds me of Barcelona versus Bayern Munich last season, the Champions League, when we played in the Allianz Arena. Because Barcelona were so good the first half, man. We were so good. And we just missed those chances. And Bayern's a team that is ruthless. They will punish you if you don't take your chances. That's the type of team Bayern is. They did that against Leverkusen. And I saw that game. So, Bayern Munich, man, is a team you have to be in your A game. You have to be flawless to beat Bayern Munich. Because this team is clinical, even when they're not playing well. That's just how Bayern is like. You know? So, like I said, man, for United, man, it's a good display. Uh, let's see what they can do. Because I believe the two teams play against each other on the final match day. And this could have huge uh, ramifications for which team tops the group. And maybe even which teams qualify. Although, I, I still feel like United will qualify. Especially given the Galatasaray tied earlier today. So, anyways, I think that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. Comment down your thoughts. Comment down below. And, yeah, like I said, guys, consider becoming a member of the channel to get access to members' videos and member streams. Which, of course, we do on a weekend basis. Also, check out my other platforms in the description below. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.